What is up guys? My name is Harry Rice and welcome back to the channel. Today is a brand new video for 25 Days of Harry as you guys can probably guess. It is very dark out right now. Well, not very, but it is dark outside. I don't know why I mentioned that, but today, as you can probably tell by the title, we are going to be looking at the history of the HHSL 2.0. That's right, we're going to be taking a look back. I believe I've counted some stuff that I did not, um, that I did not, um point out last time like I don't know if I mentioned the first trade in league history um I'm just gonna give like my overall thoughts and um yeah basically very 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 brief explanation of my sim league history and kind of just give like a little bit of behind the scenes stuff like how I do the league and whatnot I'll, I'll try and do that this is probably gonna be like a half a half an hour long video but we'll see so uh basically really quickly how I got into sim leagues was I was I used to be in a, a a Discord server with a bunch of other people, and one of them for some reason thought that I'd really really like joining this thing called a sim league. <coughs> Joined it, saw it was like be a GM except you're with real humans instead of AI. Liked it, fell in love with the idea, joined some other sim leagues, and eventually decided, hey, you know what? I want to do my own. And thusly, the HHSL was born. I took probably three to four months of preparing. I got a sheet ready. I chose the game I wanted to do, which was NHL 08, was the first one that we started with, mostly because I had that one on PC and figured, hey, it'll be really easy to go from this to 09 on PC, and then 10 onwards we can do on PS3 or whatever. That wasn't how it went, obviously. But, um, but yeah, with NHL 08, got everything ready, and uh, yeah, there was a trade, I want to say two days into the league's history. I want to say the first two days once I made the link public, there were some people joining, and then, like I said, eventually we, um, eventually we just, uh, we got a trade. The first trade in league history was as follows. Thomas Vanek to the New York Islanders in exchange for a 2007 first and third going to Buffalo. Thomas Vanek was then promptly bought out three days later. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was probably the first big situation of the HHSL was Tom McVanick, Thomas Vanek, Thomas Vanek. Thomas, Thomas Vanek getting uh, traded for, then bought out, and then I believe immediately signing with Chicago, I want to say. I don't remember if Chicago traded for him or if they signed him, but um, was pretty good for them. It turned out pretty good for him when he eventually, where, whenever he did, got to Chicago. So the Stanley Cup Finals. This is what, uh, basically, uh, by the way, real quick, well, I'm going to say what I did, uh, what we're going to talk about for every um, season, is I'm going to talk about who won the Stanley Cup Final. Any like notable chokes or impressive stat impressive stats for the playoffs? Who led the NHL in points? Who led the NHL in goals? Sometimes assists if it's like pretty pretty good. Who led the league in pins every year? Because I think it's pretty funny to see how much it declines. Um, very notable players, uh, and I mean like very like you'll see. There's like two players that I mentioned with this. Potentially the All Star game, maybe. Uh, who the worst team in the league was, um, and overall, just some thoughts on the season. So, Washington beat San Jose 4-3 in the first ever Stanley Cup Finals. San Jose chokes the 3-0 series lead. The first time, I believe, ever in Stanley Cup playoff history, uh, there's a 3-0 reverse sweep in the Stanley Cup Finals. Washington is our first ever Stanley Cup champion. That is a mix of, I believe, Ray Bro. And Habs Absolutely Hockey, because Habs Absolutely Hockey, I believe, joined very, very last second, like during the finals, after Ray Bro for some reason left. I don't remember the reason, but he did. Um, yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, San Jose's Joe Thornton led the league 88 points, and Atlanta's Ilya Kovalchuk was your highest goal scorer with uh, 47 goals, which when we get to later years, that's going to look like nothing. <laughs> that is going to look like child's play. And Dallas is Matthew Barnaby with the highest ever, uh, plus uh, PIMS, sorry, plus minus, I was going to say, highest ever amount of PIMS in an NHL season f for the HHSL, 403 penalty minutes. That's right. And also, because I made him in-game, I figured, why not? Let's bring him out of retirement two years after he came out of retirement. Mario Lemieux. Comes out of retirement, he goes to free agency, and the New York Islanders uh, capture his uh, signing attraction, and he signs with them. Gets put into the uh, the All-Star game. He's voted there, and he scores a hat trick as his team, I believe, lost 4-3. to three. He scored with, like, two seconds left for his hat trick goal. 
And that kind of sucked because they were down 4-3 to three at that point and obviously couldn't come back. Montreal was the worst team in the NHL. You're going to hear a lot about Montreal. Uh, they had a 48... Si- sorry, 28... 28- 48 re- 48 wins was the worst in the league. A 28 46 and 8 record and 64 points. Overall the first season was pretty good. I was very very happy with how the with how the uh first season in the HHSL went. I was very pleased. We had a good amount of GMs. I want to say we had about 20 to 25 I roughly No 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 no. We actually had all 30 filled up by the end of the season cuz I remember I took over Florida. I took over Florida. Because there was one team left, and I was like, and I told everybody, I'm not picking a team until there is one team left to pick. Surprisingly, it wasn't Phoenix. Surprisingly, Phoenix was taken by Canadian Bacon, and Florida was the last team. I was, and I said, hey, do you guys mind if I take Florida until we find a replacement GM? Everybody said, yeah, sure, okay, whatever. Florida's middling, whatever, at, at most, you know? And then uh, we never found a replacement GM. I, ga- I became way too attached to the Florida Panthers, and we'll hear a bit about Florida later on. But yeah, the first season overall went very, very well. Was very, very happy with how it went. Then there came a little bit of a pause, because what I had done was I was expecting to go to NHL 09 on PC, very quickly, within like a day after I tried to start editing overalls and rosters after growth, I realized, hey, this isn't going to work. I, I'm going to need to do something because I have to go in, get through like three other things that you can change, like their name and height and overall, which I do like, just to get to overalls. And yeah, that would have taken a long time. Looking back, it probably wouldn't have been as bad as it ended up being if anything it might have been a little bit easier because i'm sure some of the players that i ended up having to create were actually in the game um then i had to go to nhl 2k 10 because i figured hey i i ran a poll on discord actually i ran a poll and and i said hey do you guys want nhl 10 or nhl 2k 10 and everybody voted nhl 2k 10 or it might have been 2k 9 I, i forget no yeah it was 2k 10 actually i just realized why didn't i go to 2k do i even have 2k 9 no, I don't. That's why I went with 2K10. Because <laughs> I had bought in 2K10 when I could have just bought in 2K9. And that would have been cheaper. I'm just realizing this now. But I bought 2K10 and I was like, hey, do you guys want NHL 10 for two seasons or NHL 2K10? And everybody said 2K10. So I was like, okay. I print out, I printed out. Because I didn't have a phone. I didn't have a tablet. I, didn't, I couldn't go on the spreadsheet as often as I wanted. I printed out every single player in the NHLs and AHLs. Uh, their name, and their overall potential. Because I believe in, in 2K games, they still had the numbered potential. So it's like, okay, potential, 93, set their overalls. All right, overall, 84. Perfect, you know? So what I did is I went through, and I, I did growth very, very weirdly the first year. I went through every team looking, like, oh, okay, say, oh, Corey Perry, Anaheim. All right, there he is. Cross him off. Ryan Getzlaff, cross him off. T. Mussolini, he's there across off. Ruslan Feta, I think Ruslan Fedotanko, I don't think he was on Anaheim at this point. Oh, Ruslan Fedotanko, uh, he's not here. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I'd go through every team looking for players that are already there. Don't Not editing the overalls, just seeing if they're there, <laughs> weirdly enough. Uh, and so I do that at first. Then comes the issue of trying to move players to teams. I don't know if I was just dumb, if it was a weird glitch that happened once and it was just my luck. But as it turns out, <laughs> you really kind of can't move players around in NHL 2K10. You really kind of can't. You you kind of have to just go through. I'm pretty sure you can edit overalls and whatnot. You just kind of have to go through and just play with the rosters. Like, I'm sure you can make trades and sign people in free agency or whatever. But, like, in the base game, I don't think you can move players to teams. Because I, I try moving players off of teams, and it's like, oh, you cannot move this player off. And it's like, no, I want to get this player, you know. So 2K10 was out of the window. We had to go to NHL 10. <laughs> Long story short, we had to go to NHL 10, and it actually turned out pretty well. So 2009, 2010, um, we've got some weird stuff going on. So firstly, um, so, oh, wait, oh, sorry, we got oh, 2008, 2009. I'm sorry. Not not oh nine ten. We did not we did not lock out for another season. Oh eight oh nine. We've also got some weird stuff going on. So, 
uh, Hines, uh, 57, who was the Montreal GM at this point, trades for Danny Heatley. I just thought I'd uh, point that out. Chicago beats Atlanta 4-3 to in the Stanley Cup Finals. Atlanta chokes a 3-0 series lead. So two years in a row, the Stanley Cup champion is decided by a choke. San Jose and then Atlanta give their series to Washington and Chicago. San Jose also choked a 3-1 series lead to Chicago in the first round. So Chicago, uh, coming back twice. Um, yeah, coming back down 3-1 against San Jose in the first round and then 3 nothing against Atlanta. They are your second Stanley Cup champions and very well deserving of it if they came back down twice like that. Boston's Danny Heatley. Oh, yeah, the the the, the, Sedin, the did I say Daniel Danny Heatley? <laughs> Sorry, Daniel Sedin. Boston's Daniel Sedin, uh, who, yeah, the Bruins have the Sedin's twins. They traded. Firstly, they were traded to Montreal, and then they were traded to Boston. So, yeah. Uh, but Boston's Danny Heatley led the league. Daniel Sedin led the league with 103 points. Montreal's Danny Heatley becomes the first goal scorer in HHSL history in just the second season. And New Jersey's David Clarkson leads the NHL in PIMS, PIMS with 174, <laughs> which is one more than Jordan Tutu. He wins the uh, the Rob Ray PIMS Award, which I believe is the first year this is introduced, uh, by one penalty bit. So, yeah. Um, San Jose is the best team in the NHL with a 61-17-4 record, 126 points. They lose in the first round. Phoenix is the worst team in the NHL with a 28-47-7 record, 63 points. The defending Stanley Cup champion Washington Capitals missed the playoffs, which I believe is the only time this has happened in the HRHSL. I might be mistaken, but yeah, they they missed the playoffs, surprisingly. Um, very, very interesting. Very, very fun fact for that. And uh, yeah, so 2009-2010, we have something interesting that happens, so... In the 0809 season, basically, um, Anaheim makes the playoffs, and they're in Calgary for Game 7 of overtime. Or no, they're at home against Calgary for Game 7 of the first round. And Shane Hanaiti is a player who was pretty okay for, for Anaheim. He didn't have a great career. I think his career high before he went to Anaheim was like 5 points or 6 points. He had, I believe, like a 19 or 29-point season. And in Game 7 overtime, Shane Hanaiti gets on the puck in his own end and shoots, scores on his own net. The Flames win because of an own goal. Shane Hanaiti then proceeds to commit unalive in storyline, commits unalive, Comes back alive and then promptly gets murdered <laughs> two seasons later. <laughs> Needless to say, his time in Anaheim was done after this season. And Anaheim promptly blows it the fuck up. We're talking players getting traded for first round picks, second round picks, future considerations, acquiring pl bad players for future considerations, signing the worst available players in free agency, they tank. We'll see how that goes in a little bit. Uh, Philadelphia beats Edmonton 4-1 in your 2010 Stanley Cup Finals. Edmonton also blows a 4-1, sorry, a 4-0 lead in Game 2. Edmonton could have gone up 2-0 in that series. They won Game 1 should have won game two. Where are we talking after that? Are we talking Edmonton winning the Stanley Cup? Who knows? Uh, Philadelphia had also lost four games all playoffs. They lost one in the first round to Atlanta, two to Montreal in the second, sweep Ottawa in the Eastern Conference Finals, and then lose, like I said, game one to the Oilers. Philadelphia with one of the most impressive um, runs to the Stanley Cup that I think we've ever seen. The uh, the Oilers, of course, when they only lost two games all playoffs that, that one year they did it, and then Philadelphia here. Yeah. Uh, St. Louis also blows a 3 nothing series lead to San Jose. I believe that was in the uh, second round, I want to say. So San Jose in three straight years are involved in chokes. Two of them go against them, and one of them go for them. 
Yeah. Colorado's Danny Heatley. Yes. So Montreal acquires Danny Heatley. And after a year of 50 goals, they say, you know what? We don't like him. Colorado, give us Jordan Eberle and two first round picks. And you can have Danny Healy. I've discussed this on the channel before. Or sorry, uh, the HHSL guy has discussed him previously on this channel. You can check that out as one of the previous videos on the channel before 25 Days of Harry. But Colorado's Danny Healy leads the NHL 115 points, 51 goals. So leads the league in both those categories. Funny enough. <sighs> um, and Atlanta's. Radish Ivanaz. Ivanaz leads the NHL with 231 penalty minutes. The top four were all from Anaheim. So, yeah. There is a three-way tie for the President's Trophy. San Jose, Columbus, and Boston all with 107 points. But San Jose, with the one extra uh, win, gets the President's Trophy technically. Anaheim is the worst team in the National Hockey League. With a 1959 and four record, 42 points. Curtis Joseph starting a net for them. This is this is the tank team. This is the Anaheim. I think I believe they sold out three games all year that season. That it was bad for them. Now for the team that they assembled, they won way more than anyone expected. Everybody had them winning. Five to to eight games at most. Everybody had them being the worst team in NHL history. Not just in, in the season or in the league like HHSL. The entire NHL's history. They were projected to be the worst team. And they really weren't. Like 19 wins for a team mostly comprised of late 60 overall, early 70 overall players. Was really not that bad, honestly. Like, 19 wins is pretty good. I believe their leading point scorer still had 58 points, which for, like, a late 60s overall, it's pretty goddamn good, honestly. It's like the equivalent of, like, a 90 overall player getting 110 points. That's really good. Um, But you don't need me to tell you how NHL games work. We finally move on to NHL 11 after two years in NHL 10. And uh, league was going by pretty well now. Uh, this is probably around the peak of Sim Leagues, where it's like everybody's joining Sim Leagues. Our rosters are completely full. Uh, you know, like all the teams have GMs. There's people like in backlogs, like two or three people being like, hey, if a team opens, uh, like let me know because I'll, I'll take them over. And teams just would not leave it right now. We maybe had one or two teams leaving uh, within like a three month span. And, and it, like, a team would, would, would leave, and it'd be, like, within an hour, it felt like somebody would be like, hey, can I have this team? Like, I see they're open. Like, go ahead. Um, and, yeah, this is probably, like, these next, like, four months, I want to say this is about October to, like, February 2022, October 2021. This is kind of the peak of Sim Leagues, or at least the peak of the age rate just hello feels like activity wise, if anything now is actually better, but in terms of overall, like how GMs are doing moves and, and, and all this, this is probably the peak of the age rate just hell. San Jose finally wins your Stanley cup, uh, defeating Philadelphia in four, uh, sorry, in seven games in the Stanley cup finals, winning four to three in game seven, double overtime, San Jose, uh, near almost, uh, allowed Philadelphia to become a two-time cup champion, which would have been the first time in the salary cap era of a back-to-back -back cup champion. We'll get to uh, the one that happens later. Uh, but San Jose wins, and Philadelphia had only lost three games in in the first three rounds before losing four in the finals. They had lost one to Pittsburgh, swept Montreal in a shock, uh, and lost only two to Ottawa. So, interestingly there, San Jose kind of slayed the dragon in a way. Uh, Colorado's Danny Heatley leads the league with 95 points, and Colorado's Ilya Kovalchuk, that's right, they also got Ilya Kovalchuk now, uh, scored 42 goals for the Rocket, a very, very down year. Weirdly enough, this era, like early HHSL, was very, very low goal scoring, very low point totals. Um, not necessarily like, oh, games are ending 1 nothing, 2 to 1. Like, games, some games are ending like 6 to 5, 4 to 3, you know? But it's like, oh, we have like, 11 unique goal scores total, you know, like we have one guy with three points if you're lucky, you know, like it, it's kind of that era NHL game, you know, where they're trying to even out the points, 
but like not really because like superstars are still getting points but like not many you know um you know it's 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 like i even tried i tried like i think danny healy at this point is like a 95 96 he's the best player in the nhl with like 99 shooting and he's not even like the best goal scorer in the nhl which is just you know it gets frustrating after after a bit but uh we we eventually fixed it we kind of corrected ourselves Winnipeg's Boris Valabek lead, leads the league with 184 penalty minutes. Uh, five through ten of the of the top ten Pims leaders, five through ten except number seven were Anaheim players. So five, six, eight, nine, and ten are all Anaheim Duck players. Colorado is your best team in the NHL with a 54, 25, and three record, 111 points. Anaheim, holy hell! Anaheim is your worst team in the league with 41 points. 17, 58, and 7 records. So they lose two, le- two less games. Sorry, they win two, two less games. One less actual loss. Seven, uh, two more, I believe it is, in overtime. Three more in overtime. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and also, relocations. Phoenix had relocated to Quebec, and Carolina relocates to Winnipeg. For the 11-12 season, Atlanta relocates to Hartford. So the Whalers are back. The Thrashers, no more. Just three years, I believe, after making the Stanley Cup Final. They're gone. They're out of the NHL, surprisingly. Montreal defeats Edmonton 4-1 in your Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, And, yeah, Montreal winning their first Stanley Cup in almost almost, uh, 20 years, 19 years uh, from winning their last Stanley Cup. Uh, and they've got Cup 25, the NHL uh, 25 Stanley Cups for Montreal. That's all I can say. Florida. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, Florida. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, we're not going to start with the most impressive one. Florida. So, <laughs> Florida sweeps Toronto in the first round. Toronto scores four goals all series. So they scored literally one goal per game. San Jose uh, sweeps Minnesota in the first round. Uh, Minnesota scores three goals all game. So they were scoring at a 0.75 goals per game average in that series. And Florida sweeps Pittsburgh in the second round. Pittsburgh scores one goal all series. The lone goal in game four. So they scored a 0.25 goals against average all series. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, uh... Florida allows five goals in eight games. That is an average of, what, 0.7 goals per game, something like that. Uh, in case you couldn't tell, uh, they lost to Montreal. Weirdly enough, Montreal has always been Florida's kryptonite in in this sim league, in this league. We're going to get to more on that a little bit later. Uh, Colorado's Danny Heatley leads the NHL with 109 points and 54 goals. Again, if you want more on Danny Heatley, check out the HRHSL guys video on that. Colorado's Alexander Radulov with an impressive 70 assist season. Uh, yeah, I believe he was like fifth in the NHL. He also had, I think, 28 something goals. Pretty good season for him. Chicago's John Scott leads the league as well with 207 penalty minutes. Colorado's Mika Kiprasoft uh, with an astonishing 1.95 goals against average and a 931 save percentage in 72 games in the regular season. Yeah, I don't think they made it out of the second round that year. I want to say that was the year they didn't make it out. But Florida leads the NHL 62-15-5 record, 129 points. They actually tie Tied that season, the NHL record for wins in a season, and I believe points as well, I think. Yeah. Uh, Winnipeg is your worst team, surprisingly. 23-53-6 and six record with 52 points. So, every year in the Sim League so far, there has been that one team that is just absolutely garbage. First season, like I said, it's, it's, it's Montreal, who aren't even that bad. 28-46-8, they almost had 30 wins. Then it's, you know, Phoenix, who isn't also that bad. Then it's just Anaheim, Anaheim, and, and Winnipeg. All right. So for the 12-13 season, St. Louis is defeated by Montreal. 4-3 to in the Stanley Cup Finals. Game 7 overtime. First back-to-back cup champions in the salary cap era. 
Montreal has done it. Cup 26, just like that. Every hey. hey, it took 25 minutes. That's impressive. Uh, first round versus Hartford. Uh, sorry. Uh, every Montreal series either went four games or seven. The first round against Hartford goes seven games. Second round, they sweep Toronto. Eastern Conference Finals, they sweep Washington. And the Stanley Cup Finals, like I said, St. Louis, they win in seven. Colorado also got reverse swept by St. Louis in the Western Conference Finals. After losing only two games prior in the playoffs, they lost two games to Vancouver in the first round and then swept, I forget who it was, in the second round. And then, like I said, they got reverse swept by St. Louis. So this finals was almost Montreal Colorado. How interesting could that a finals have been? Montreal with the uh, argue you could argue almost dynasty, and Colorado with Danny Heatley, the former Montreal Canadian, and some of the best players in the NHL right now: Danny Heatley, Ilya Kovalchuk, Mika Kiprasov, Jonas uh, Norquist, who's pretty underrated in the in the HHSL. Um, and speaking of Colorado's Danny Heatley leads the NHL with 92 points, 40 goals. So yeah, the point scoring is coming way down. It is coming down for sure. Very unfortunately at this point in NHL 13. St. Louis's Ben Schrott, <coughs> sorry, Jesus, leads the NHL with 192 pims. So he leads with 100 more pims than the leading NHL point scorer. I thought that was just pretty funny to say. Um... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, oh shit. <laughs> okay, I put something funny. I'm going to have to put the, say that when it comes time. Colorado's Mika Kiprasov. We were mentioning goaltenders. He is the most dominant player this season. And this is easily, easily his best ever NHL season. A 1.73 goals against average and a 941 save percentage. Mika Kiprasov as well. Plays every single game. He plays all 82 in the regular season. And I believe every game in the playoffs as well. Mika Kiprasov, Mika Kiprasov gets. Kipper is the most dominant player in the NHL. Uh, and also Florida's goalie situation with Roberto Luongo and Carey Price was starting to boil up. I would figured I'd mention that. Colorado, no shit, leads the NHL with a 61-18-3 record and 125 points. They are four points off. One win off the NHL, uh, tying the NHL record. If there was a season for them to do it, it was that season. Uh, Nashville is also the worst team in the league with a 26-48-8 record and 60 points. The fact that isn't looking too bad compared to Anaheim's teams is just is just hilarious in my opinion. The 2013 NHL All-Star Game was also infamously canceled due to Heinz 57 dropping out before an opponent or the arena rights could be secured. Um, Heinz infamously had paid the NHL, um, $25 million to, um, secure the rights to the 2013 NHL game and then left the New York Rangers, which was the team he was coaching. He left the team before the rights can be secured, um, before the, the opponents, uh, could be, de could be decided the, the team he would be facing. He left, and the NHL kept that $25 million. Um, they they were given that a year in advance, and, and a very, very, very weird situation there. We, there could be a whole video about Heinz 57's tenure as Montreal and the Rangers and Hartford's general managers in the HHSL. We could, we could do a whole video on him, honestly, in the future. So for the 13-14 season, we're almost there, boyos. I believe this is new territory. I don't think we had gotten to the 13-14 season by the time the last uh, break had happened, by the time last uh, last year's 25 Days of Harry had been recorded. Detroit defeats San Jose 4-0 in the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, Chicago choked, or sorry, uh, yeah, Detroit uh, beating San Jose in dominant fashion. Of course, San Jose very controversially going with uh, youngster... Uh, Andre Vasilevsky in net for the first couple games and then going back to Rick DiPietro would not help them. Detroit wins their, I believe, a ninth uh, Stanley Cup championship in team history. Chicago choked a 4-1 lead to San Jose with six minutes left in Game 7. Um, this is, you could argue, the most pathetic choke in NHL history, but I would say Toronto blowing a 5-0 lead all the way back in 2000 is still worse than this because... Okay, they blow a 4-1 lead with six minutes left in Game 7. 
they can still win that in overtime. Toronto blew a 5-0 lead to St. Louis with 15 minutes left in the third period. St. Louis scores six unanswered there. So this one, like, okay, it's five. It's, it's, it's pretty much four goals in six minutes. But San Jose is San Jose. San Jose is one of the best teams in the HRHSL. St. Louis, I'm pretty sure that team was one of the, I'm pretty sure in 2000, was one of the worst teams in the NHL. This is definitely up there still as a choke, but it's not as big of a choke as I think everybody says. All right. Um, Boston's Danny Healy, Ottawa's Steven Stamkos, and Minnesota's Wayne Gretzky uh, tie for the NHL lead with 89 points. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gretzky came back for his third NHL season this year. Um, he came back for the 2011-12 season because he was in the NHL 12. He had asked to uh, be approved by the NHL to make a return, and they approved it, and he did, and he signed with Minnesota. This was, I believe, the end of a three-year contract he was given, I believe. Uh, it was almost a five-way tie as well. Ottawa's Alexander Semin and Florida's Miku Koivu uh, had 88 points. This almost became a comedic uh, race for the for the Ted Lindsay, or not the Ted Lindsay, the, uh, the points lead in the NHL. Minnesota's Wayne Gretzky also led the NHL, as I put, with 41 points. Uh, if we ever get to that that point in the league, uh, it's dead. But 41 goals is what I meant to put. And he retires. Minnesota's Wayne Gretzky re-retires. Um, you could say re-tires, if you will. Um, yeah, M- Wayne Gretzky said that he enjoyed Minnesota. He had fun uh, with uh, several veterans on the team. Will- Haley Wickenheiser... Um, <laughs> Thomas Pekanich, uh, coaching some young kids, helping coach some young kids like Joe Thornton, sorry, not Joe Thornton, Joe Pavelski, uh, uh, Ryan Pulak, who is coming into the team at this point. Um, he said he had done anyth- everything that he wished to do in his comeback, barring winning a Stanley cup. And he retired. Uh, Florida's John Scott led the NHL with 225 penalty minutes. And Detroit's Ilya Proskorikov, out of nowhere, putting up a 1.79 goals against average, a 9.39 save percentage in 67 games to lead Detroit to the playoffs and to a Stanley Cup. Ilya Proskorikov, who uh, I believe was then promptly traded after the next season, after the 14-15 year. Um, interestingly enough, Detroit fans uh, were not happy about that, which is completely understandable. But yeah, great run for Proskorikov. Uh, I apologize. Sorry. Ottawa wins the President's Trophy with 117 points, a 57-22-3 record. Also, I should mention all the way back in the 08-09 season in free agency for that year, the first technically the technically the first like big free agency. There was a European invasion. A ton of European players came over all at once, and uh, yeah, Ilya Proskorikov, Proskorikov was one of those guys. Nashville, yet again, is worse than the league. A 29-47-6 record and 64 points. And uh, Hartford, just like in real life, uh, relocates to Carolina. Everybody decided, hey, Hartford isn't working out after two seasons. They made the playoffs last year. They still weren't selling out. They relocate back to Carolina, who has arguably done worse uh, than Hartford. In 14-15, Montreal defeats Chicago 4-3 in the Stanley Cup Finals. They are the first NHL dynasty since the 1980s Edmonton Oilers. Three cups in four years. It is now at this point uh, three cups, four cup finals in six years, which is just insane. Montreal, Florida, second round series. Games three through six all went to double overtime. Florida also chokes a 3-0 series lead to Montreal. So they win Game 3 in double overtime. Of course, Jonathan Jerome with that incredible, uh, great deke goal on Sergei Bobrovsky. And then Montreal scores uh, uh, three straight uh, a double overtime game-winning goals. And they win the series. They take it in double overtime. And they go on to the Eastern Conference Finals. And would end up, of course, like I said, winning the Stanley Cup to be a dynasty. Montreal's Alex Ovechkin leads the NHL, 107 points, 56 goals. There we go, right back to the good old point scoring. Oh my God, my hair. But Montreal, there we go. Florida's Yarmir Yager at almost 45 years of age, a 69 assist, nice, 
point season. Or sorry, 69 assists, zero goals. 69 assists, 100 point season. He was second in the NHL. Yager arguably just gets better with age, you could say. Anaheim's Victor Louvre led the NHL as well with 230 penalty minutes. Uh, just a great season for the young kid. I believe he also put up 19 points. That was, I believe, his rookie season as well. Uh, he just embraced the enforcer role that he was supposed to uh, deliver on. And recent after that season, he's tried to be more than he really needs to be. He's tried to be a defensive defenseman. He's, he's best as an enforcer, I think. Florida wins the President's Trophy with a 59-17-6 record and 124 penalty minutes. Jersey is the worst team in the league with 61 points and a 24-45-13 record. They also give up fourth overall. They traded uh, for Joe Thornton out of Florida and gave up Mitch Marner. Mitch Marner, who is uh, projected to start in the Florida Panthers lineup this year. If you're Jersey, even though Thornton has been good, you trade him to Boston, you arguably would want Mitch Marner. You arguably would rather have Mitch Marner than Joe Thornton right now. So, yeah, you weigh the good with the bad. Also, I want to point out 2015's NHL draft might be the most stacked in history. The entire first round were all 84 potential plus players. There could easily be 35 plus players act entering the league just from this draft class by 2017-18. We've already had, I believe, uh, 10 or 11, I believe. We could have a shit ton of players entering the league from this draft. Mitch Marner is going to be one of them. And I, I just want to read out really quickly uh, the players. The players that made... Uh, that were selected in this first round. I, I just want to read out all of them really quickly if I can. First overall, Washington picks Connor McDavid. Second overall, LA picks Austin Matthews. Uh, for those who are wondering, by the way, Austin Matthews, he's in 2016. We do the draft differently. We do the draft by uh, birth year. So, for example, uh, 2015, basically 1997 would be the year that you, uh, from 97, 2015 would be the year you turn 18. So, realistically, uh, I wanted to just have that be like, okay, 1997, then if you're born that year, you're eligible for 2015, 1990, uh, 1995, or sorry, 1997, 1995 for 2014, no, 1996 for 2014, 1995 for 2013, you get the drill, and, and going forward as well, that's how we've done the draft, that's probably how I'll likely do the draft in future draft classes, just because I really like that. I think it's a lot easier than, oh, all right, got to look for overagers in future draft class. Like, no, just, all right, look, all right, age, boom, age, boom, age, boom. It's a lot easier than that. Kirill Kaprizov, third overall to the Anaheim Ducks. Mitch Marner, fourth to the Florida Panthers. I'm going to give I'm gonna give some picks out of order really quickly. Na Nashville, Sebastian Ajo at number six, uh, the forward Sebastian Ajo. Tomas Shabbat, number eight to the Anaheim Ducks. Alex Debrinket at number 10 to the Dallas Stars. Pittsburgh at number five, Matthew Kachuk. At number seven, Charlie McAvoy. Number nine, uh, Brock Besser. At number 11, Matt Barzell. All those picks are Pittsburgh's. They get Winnipeg's pick at number five. Tampa's at number seven. Their own at number nine. And Columbus is at number 11. They were in a rebuild at this point. Uh, they were trying to build around Paul Byron. It was not really working, unfortunately. Uh, they traded Crosby. They traded Malkin. They traded... Uh, pretty funny enough, everybody except uh, Peter Puka, Paul Byron, and Marc Andre Fleury were the guys that they traded. Uh, Zach Wierenski at twelve to Nashville, Ivan Proroff thirteen to Quebec, Tage Thompson to, to Vancouver, Anthony Bavillier to Minnesota, Troy Terry to San Jose, Noah Hannafin to Rain to the Rangers, uh, and Dong Song to the Anaheim Ducks. People are wondering who the hell is And Dong Song? Is he created? No, I made him a gem because I like his name. Uh, ignore him. Everybody else is like an actual NHLer. Uh, Ilya Samsonov nineteen to Detroit, Dennis Gurianov to Colorado, Travis Konechny uh, to Anaheim, Pavel Zaka to Calgary, Joel Eriksson to, uh, to San Jose, Jordan Greenway to Detroit, Anthony Sorelli to Buffalo, Tanner Janot to Anaheim. Uh, Oliver Shillington to San Jose, Dylan Strom to Vancouver, Philip Pronak to Chicago, and Ethan Bear to, to Montreal. Just some notable players in the second and third round, Jack Roslovic, Eric Chernak, uh, Daniel Sprong, John Marino, Dan Vladar, uh, Christian Fisher, if you will, Jonas Siegenthal, Erasmus Asplund, who's in the NHL right now, uh, Noah Juleson, Alex Barre Boule, uh, Alex Barre Boule, uh, Jakob, uh, Jakob Zaboral, Henrik Bjorkstrom, uh, Wade Allison, and the last pick in the draft, uh, Gil Brisebois. This draft, honestly, I could see, um, about 95% of all these players 
making the NHL. I can easily see that being the case. I can easily see that. There could be the highest success rate of any ever NHL draft in this draft class. Like, legit, that would be a great draft class to look at when the draft, when the when the league is over and say, hey, to HSL guy, hey, can you look at the 2015 draft and talk about how ev- almost every player made the NHL potentially? That'd be really fun. And uh, we'll see. So 2015-16, this is this is the season I'm I'm really smiling for. And I think we're gonna go in reverse order from the bottom to the top this time. The Kings tie for the worst team points wise with Tampa Bay. LA had a 26, 47, and 9 record, 61 points. They were technically worse. They had two less wins. Tampa Bay has a 28, 49, and 5 record, 61 points. Uh LA at least had some promise to them. They they had Austin Matthews who couldn't come up to the NHL because he was still 17, but there were still some problem. There were some problems with the Kings. Obviously, they had Daniel Sprong, who was a gem in 2015. They had a lot of really good prospects, so they knew they had to go through one more shit year. Tampa Bay was just bad. I believe their leading point scorer was defenseman Joe Corvo, with like 39 points. It was just, it was a bad year for Tampa Bay that season, and it it just. It just did not go well. They traded for David Sergrovsky out of Toronto, who had some 60-point years. He didn't live up at all. It was a terrible year for them. Um, Florida wins the President's Trophy with a record-breaking, and I don't think this will ever be matched ever in the NHL, 79-3 and record, 143 points, 70 wins, 9 losses, Three overtime or shootout losses. That Florida team was just absolutely amazing. I believe they had a goals four per game of like four point two three, something insane like that. They they were putting up amazing numbers. Uh, and Florida's Carey Price. Speaking of him, actually, we're gonna do the Pims first because why not? Adam McQuaid of the Islanders and Ben Sherrod of the Vancouver Canucks both had two hundred and sixty two penalty minutes. A very, very good season for Adam McQuaid by those standards. And Ben Chirot, pretty good too. Florida's Carey Price in his first year as the starter, basically what had happened, Luongo and Price were getting along. They were very, very happy to be a starter backup combo. Price obviously let it be known he would like to be a starter, but he is perfectly fine with being a backup. Then Florida trades for Gabriel Landeskog. Landeskog and Luongo had something happen in the the past, something in an all-star game. But Luongo and Landis Cog would not play for each other. Apparently, the, the Florida general manager did, manager did not know of the incident that had happened until after the trade was already made. And so, he elects to trade Roberto Luongo, surprisingly, instead of Gabriel Landis Cog, who was seen as coming in as potentially the the next great second-line left-winger to them because they that had been something they were lacking at a little bit was second-line left-wing depth uh, until they had realized that Jonathan Drouin would pop off this year. <laughs> they didn't realize that would happen. Uh, they trade Luongo. Price is their starter. They get jean Bastion Jaguer from the Rangers. I believe it's the Rangers. Uh, he's backing up Carey Price at 40 years old. 39, I believe. And Landis Cog f- fucks off to the SHL. He gets traded to Winnipeg partway through the season. But Carey Price, first year as a starter, 1.81 goals against average. 933 save percentage in 66 regular season games. Florida's Artemi Panarin, Ottawa's Evgeny Dadunov, and Montreal's Alex Ovechkin tie for the Rocker Bashar with 56 goals. Vancouver's Anton Curry, Kurianov was one goal off. I have a video on Kurianov on the season on the channel as well. Go check that out. I talked about uh, his very, very selfless act uh, to help Vancouver win the, their final game of the year. Um, in overtime, we talked about that and, uh, you can go check out that video for the full story. Cause that's, it's a really, really good one. We're already going on 45 minutes and, uh, yeah. Uh, Florida's Artemi Panarin led the NHL with 103 points. Yeah. Uh, Florida, it was just an amazing year for them. However, it was almost terrible. Florida nearly chokes a three, nothing lead to Washington. They blew the f- game four through six. They were tied three, three. And Jonathan Drouin scores the only goal of Game 7. Or Carey Price with the shutout. I believe it was, I, weirdly enough, his only shutout of the playoffs, I believe, was that Game 7. 
And Florida goes to the Stanley Cup Finals as a result. That was in the Eastern Conference Finals, by the way. They almost choked 3 nothing. Colorado makes it to the Finals, uh, winning off the biggest playoff blowout of all time, I believe. They beat Winnipeg 9-1. to Yeah, uh, that, that Winnipeg Jets team would not blow it up until the year after this. They, the Winnipeg GM was pissed at at his team um and yeah winnipeg just winnipeg rioted after the nine to one loss that that is how bad it was they rioted while colorado celebrated but florida in five games defeat the colorado avalanche in the stanley cup finals in the rematch of 1996 where colorado sweeps this time florida wins their franchise's first Stanley Cup over Colorado. So Colorado's undefeated streak of uh, 2-0 and in the Stanley Cup Finals is now 2-1. and uh, And John Scott, the unlikely hero, his second goal of the playoffs was the Stanley Cup winning goal. Uh, Jonathan Drouin had scored to make it 1-0, then it was John Scott, and I believe it was uh, Jonas Norkvist or I believe Jochen Hecht who had scored to make it 2-1, and they would hold Florida would be your Stanley Cup champions for 2016. They'd finally get over the hump. Uh, almost 20, uh, 20, 23 years in the NHL, it takes them to win the Stanley Cup. And it, you can't say it's not well-deserved. Their general manager built up a great team, just like how Boyer had in Montreal, uh, Jack Olson had in San Jose, Lucas C. did for a while in Ottawa. Um, the, several great general managers. I, I, I'm refusing, I'm not refusing. I'm, I'm forgetting a couple, but there's been some amazing general managers in the HRHSL. And I, and I think that the Florida general managers is, is up there for sure. Probably top five. Uh, I, I would probably say 2016, 17 is the most recent season that had happened. And, um, yeah, Chicago beats Montreal four to one in the Stanley cup finals, a rematch of 2015, after getting blown out 8-1 to one in Game 1, you may argue this is the biggest playoff blowout of all time just because it happened in the finals. But Winnipeg had Sidney Crosby. Winnipeg had Alex Ove- uh, uh, Evgeny Malkin. They had uh, uh, Sebastian Kohlberg, who was turning out to be an amazing first-liner for them. They had, I believe, Ben Bishop in net. Chicago had Corey Crawford in net. They have Patrick Kane, Thomas Vanek, Gilbert Brule. They have great, great players. They have Duncan Keith and Brent Seabrook. I'm sorry, not not uh, Duncan Keith at this point. He had been let go to free agency where he signed with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, but either way, um, still, Winnipeg, man, like with the um, good amount of team they had, should have not been blown out 9-1. to Chicago, you can at least understand it. Because Montreal had star power up and down their lineup easily. Uh, they actually came back down 5-2 in Game 2 to end up winning 6-5, to I believe, in overtime. Montreal had lost two games total before the Stanley Cup Final. In the first round against Florida, was a sweep. Second round against Ottawa was a sweep. The Eastern Conference Finals against the Rangers, it took six games. And they win one game in the Stanley Cup Finals. Should have won two. They should have won that game, too. And who knows what happens after that. But Chicago, they come back 6-5, to five, and that's the momentum changer. Chicago wins four straight, the gentlemen sweep, and they win their second Stanley Cup uh, in franchise history. Uh, no, not in franchise history, sorry. In, uh, they win their second cup in the HHSL. I believe they're seventh uh, overall, I believe. Montreal's Alex Ovechkin led the NHL with 109 points. Uh, and I'm going to save this history for the end of this season because it deserves to be. Uh, Vancouver's Anton Kurianov puts up 63 goals, but he doesn't win the Rocket Richard. Well, well, like I said, we'll get to that. Ottawa's Alexander Semin puts up 72 assists. Boston's Joe Thornton with 71, I believe, with just 11 goals. So Joe Thornton with a very Joe Thornton season. Dallas's uh, Curtis McDermott led the NHL with 161 penalty minutes. San Jose leads the NHL with a 53-23-6 record for the President's Trophy and 112 points. Nashville, again, is the worst team in the NHL, a 29-48-5 record. And I I wanted to bring up, because I I asked people in the Discord server 
What do they want me to talk about? What do they wanted me? What do they want me to talk about? And I got a suggestion to talk about the Winnipeg GM, um, who is now in Calgary. He was trying to make trades every day of the season throughout his first two seasons of the league. Most of them would end up getting vetoed because they were horrible, horrible fleeces. Or they could not be put in game this season due to a glitch. That glitch weirdly only affecting teams that had to be moved because we have created teams. We have teams that aren't actually in their division. For example, uh, Buffalo is in the Atlantic. They moved to the Metropolitan because we also have Quebec in the league. So they have to be in the Atlantic division. That only makes sense because Montreal's there. So, yeah, Quebec, Buffalo, Columbus, and Winnipeg, I believe, were the teams that technically couldn't make trades. They could add players like in free agency, but they could not add players from different teams. They could essentially not make trades. So, yeah. Uh, and the Dallas Stars made the playoffs for the first time in nearly a decade. They made the playoffs in the first season, 07-08. That is, of course, the uh, the infamous uh, Mike Medano hits the post in the empty net. Chicago back the other way, tie the game, force overtime. And Mike Medano would redeem himself setting up the game-winning goal. And I believe the series-winning goal, actually, I believe, to give Dallas their uh, first series win since, I want to say, 2004. Three, I want to say. Uh, but Dallas made the playoffs for the first time in, like I said, nearly a decade. First time in, in nine years. And that is the first time that Mad Mike has ever made the HHSL playoffs. There will be a video in the future on the time, of course, that we all remember of him going $50 million over the salary cap. Um, this was his first time making the Stanley Cup final, uh, making the Stanley Cup playoffs. He would sweep Minnesota. Then he would unfortunately end up losing... I forget to who, but he would end up losing in the second round. And uh, Mad Mike is looking like an actual playoff contender now. And uh, we'll see how things go. So, yeah. And now the reason I wanted to hold off is because Tampa Bay's Patrick O'Sullivan, firstly playing with Buffalo, is traded nine games into the season with nine, go- with nine goals in nine games. Tampa obviously clearly wanting a player that is very hot to help them keep off to a fairly hot start. I believe they were... I want to say 6-3-1 and one after their first month. They wanted a guy who can, you know, come in, be a good second liner, and, and provide some good offense. O'Sullivan makes history. For the first time in the HRH to sell, and the first time since Bernie Nichols, I believe, Patrick O'Sullivan is the first 50-50. 50, 50. 50 goals in 49 games is what he would put up. He leads the NHL, obviously, unfortunately for Anton Kurianov, with 70 goals. Patrick O'Sullivan scores an astonishing 70 goals. That is the first, probably the last, likely the only time we ever get a 70 goal score in the HRHSL history. That was we. Everybody was following it. We got to see fifty the fiftieth live. We watched that game, and it, it was just it was it was absolutely insane. Tampa Bay just just had an amazing year. They went from the worst team in the NHL, by the way, to uh, a playoff team. I believe they made the second round. I want to say, and um, yeah, if it hasn't been posted yet, I'm not sure if, which order I'm putting out the HHSL videos. There might be already. Go check out the Patrick O'Sullivan video. If it's not yet, then it's probably in the upcoming days. Uh, but go check out the Patrick O'Sullivan video because it is very fascinating to see his progression. And, um, yeah. So that is all pretty much it for the HHSL, except for the 17-18 season so far. The Houston Arrows are introduced as the 31st NHL team. You guys probably have seen the expansion draft video I put out. It's almost an hour and a half long. I was extremely, extremely proud of that video, uh, BK, of course, is the 31st, the first ever 31st NHL GM for the HRHSL. Uh, very, very proud to have him as as a GM in the league and very proud, very happy that he agreed to do the expansion draft in a way that we didn't uh, we didn't expect. I think we all went above and beyond for that. So, yeah, uh, thank you guys for being a part of the HRHSL if you're a part. If you're not... I will put that link in the description because holy hell, it is so much fun. It is so cool. I think you guys are going to like it. Even when the HRHSL is done, if you guys are watching this after the HRHSL is is over, there's probably going to be the, le- the the link to the Sim League because I'm once this league is done, 
I'm doing another. <laughs> I, I've already got ideas for another Sim League, another like three or four Sim Leagues I can do after the HHSL. Um, but 100%, I'm doing a Sim League after the HHSL dies, so there's going to be that. So, yeah. Um, that is going to meanwhile do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, favorite, share, which includes, but it is not limited to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and everything else. My name is Rice. Subscribe to the Puff Club. Subscribe to Hazy Club. Subscribe to the Club. Subscribe to the Nation. If you're on the Lamont Squad, thank you for moderating comments on streams and our videos. It is much greatly appreciated. Thank you guys uh, again so much for watching. Link subscription on the Amazon, the PO box, and the PayPal, the Discord, the Twitch, the Letterbox, and the PO box, and the letter and the speedrunning account are all down there as well. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Again, my name is Harry. Again, and I, and I'll say classy boys. I don't matter how, and always remember, no, always remember, no matter how bad we are like last year, how good we might be like this year. Go have the go, baby. Thank you guys again so much for watching. And my name is Harry. Again, and I, I'm out. Love you guys. See you guys. Bye guys. Join the HHSL. You guys are gonna love it. It's a blast. Love you guys. See you guys. Bye, guys.